okay so the first number that we're gonna call is six 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 and it says that people all over the world have been called by this number and there's all kinds of scary stories of what have happened to people after they've gotten this phone call so we're gonna call this right now and we're just gonna see what happens I was so nervous to use my phone like I was almost gonna use Ty's phone cuz like why don't I use his phone no. Why don't we use his phone? Because this is our problem. Like, I don't think we should put a curse on somebody else. It's not fair. <laughs> but he doesn't care. Well, we have to act like we don't care either. All right. So, six, six, like six, 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 six. Just so everyone can see. I don't know if you can't see, but we're going to call this right now. Fortunately, we cannot complete your call and dial. Obviously. Please check the number and try your call again. I don't need to check the number. I know what number it was. Okay, so I mean, that's kind of good. But then again, like the story that's underneath, it says he never picked up the phone. And then several minutes later, he received a voicemail. So if we get a call or a voicemail, I'll be scared. <laughs> So the next number is 9999999 and it says according to the urban legend in Thailand it's a cursed number. If you call it and make a wish, your wish will be granted. However, you will die soon afterwards in a freak accident. So let's call but I don't want to make a wish, do you? Yeah. You're going to make a wish? Sure. Okay. I'll call you make the wish. <laughs> that sounds pretty fair. Okay. 9999999 The local number you have dialed must be preceded by its area code. This call cannot be completed as dialed. Please hang up and redial using the area code. What area code should we use? Uh, well... What's a Thailand we're in, we're area code? Six. No, um... What's a Thailand area code? Because it's in Thailand, right? Whoa, what happened to my wrist? I suddenly have this big red oh mark my on my wrist! What is that? It's like a huge scratch! Manny, come Seriously, here! Though. Seriously, though? Was I scratching in the video? I'll have to see in editing. I don't remember scratching, but suddenly I have this massive, like, gash this on my is arm. red all over your arm. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what's that? My cursed- oh, that's my- I, um, burned myself. Ooh, I know. It was horrible. I sent you a picture, I think. Apparently, a popular area code in Thailand is 6-6. Six -six. Okay. Okay, so we'll- we'll do that. Here we go again. Here I go again on my own. 6-6. <laughs> six -six. Nine 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 nine. Unfortunately, we cannot complete your call. So make a wish. I can't make a wish just, if he doesn't answer. But this, I don't think it's supposed to answer. I think you just make a wish. No. You're not going no. to now. You're no. scared. If it picked up. Okay. So the next one is zero nine zero four 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 four. Don't you think world peace is worth dying over? So you're gonna wish for world peace? What, isn't that worth dying for? Yeah! So why don't you wish for world peace then? I would die for that. So say it. Yeah, but... Say it out loud! Say it out loud! <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Say it. Okay, Edward. Calm down. Gotta say the sentence. Stop! Yeah. <laughs> so you don't want to be cursed! I, I, in general, I wish for world peace. Okay, we'll you just said it. Okay. There you go. Alright. Whatever. So, the next number we're gonna call is one from Japan, and it's called Sadako's number. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But apparently, if you call the number, you're supposed to be able to hear some strange, creepy noise. And if you call the number, you die within a week. Okay. In some type of accident. That's, that's what apparently happens. See, that stuff is stupid. How are you gonna die with it? How? So many people do that. It's like sending an email and saying if you don't forward it, you're gonna see a scary person. Yeah. Well, that's why these are just urban legends, right? Okay, so 090-4444-4444. I feel like we're on like Canadian I or American I don't like. Just call 444. For a collect call, please press 11. To charge this call to another number, please one, press just do it. one. No, I don't want to be charged. <laughs> I don't want to be charged for this call. Welcome to Rogers. Okay, so obviously that didn't work out. The next one is from Bulgaria. It says the number is cursed. Anyone who has a mobile phone with this number will die a horrible death. So I don't have this number, so I won't die. But it says you don't want anything to do with the number. So right now we're going to call it, which is probably not a good idea, but we're going to have to wait. 888. 888. I have a headache all of You have time. a headache? Well, I have scratches on my arm, so... Unfortunately, we cannot complete your call as dialed. Please check the number. Big 
surprise. Yeah, I don't think anything's gonna happen per se in this video, but you guys wanted us to actually call, so that's what we're doing right now. The next number is from Asia. It says it's cursed. If you call it, you will hear a male voice telling you that if you did not call 15 or more people and tell them about the cursed number, you will die. Wow. So, tell all my friends about the cursed number. Okay. One, Zero 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 zero. It's about to get lit. If a man answers, I will literally be so scared. Don't hang up though if it happens. Unfortunately, we cannot complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and try your call again. I want to file a complaint <laughs> to this website. Okay, the next number is 666. And in the USA, there's an urban legend about the number 666. You will contact They say the you devil. will contact the devil if you call it. That's hilarious. I don't think it'll Imagine be Imagine the devil like with like Fido phone, like just like, <laughs> hello, what's up? I don't even think we'll be able to call it. No, like, so I've seen so many videos of people doing this. We're trying. We cannot complete your call as dialed. The thing is, guys, like, we like to be a legit paranormal channel, and we're not gonna fake stuff just for entertainment. Like, so many channels, like, pretend they're calling and they get answers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like that's just ridiculous to me. And so. hopefully this will like make you a little bit more confident and not so like paranoid about certain things and urban mm. legends and stuff because like don't believe everything you read. Yeah. You know? We're gonna show you the truth. So if we're not getting answers, that's how it is, you know? The truth. <laughs> the truth on this channel. Okay, and then there's one more number that I'm gonna call. And it says that this number was set up to promote the horror movie Carrie. At the end of the movie, it said call Carrie and the number was displayed. When you call the number, a different number calls you back three times with creepy messages. Do it. The first is a horrified screaming. The second is spooky singing. Was that a knock? Second is spooky singing. Second is spooky singing. Second is spooky singing. Okay, I literally... It sounded like something running in the attic. What was that? <laughs> what was that? I can't deal with this. That was weird. That was really bizarre. You think it's just time messing with us? No, he wouldn't do that. I don't know what that was. I wonder if the camera caught it. Anyways, let's try and call this number. <laughs> Mandy's stressed. I do stressed. not want to die today. <laughs> Mandy is stressed. I do okay. not want to die today. One two zero seven four zero four two six zero four. I think I tried calling this one last time. I can't remember. You okay? I'm just stressed. You good? I'm just stressed. It's taking forever to call. It just says calling and nothing's happening. This is the first time nothing's happened. It's like frozen. That is so weird. Where's my phone? It just... The number you have called is not assigned. Please check the number and try to call again. That was weird. That took so long. Okay, low key, I do not know how my phone got over there. <laughs> it's just across the room. Do you understand that I've been looking like I put it just like I put it in between my legs. And now it's just across the room. Do you remember me? Like I don't remember you putting the phone anywhere, but what is true is that my house is haunted, that's for sure. And because my house is so haunted, the next video that Mandy and I are doing today is at 3 a.m. We're doing the ghost paper challenge. Mandy's gonna do hers in the basement of my house, and I'm gonna do mine on the main floor. So we're gonna see what happens. But anyway. So in today's video, we are going to be calling some more cursed and creepy numbers. We did this, I think, two years ago, and half of those numbers we called did not work. So I was lucky enough to find an article that was written in 2019, thank goodness, that has numbers that actually do work, or so they claim to work. So we're gonna try these. We've never tried any of these before, and I'm really nervous. When the phone rings, and you wonder if someone's gonna actually pick up. Yeah. The question is, last time did I block my number? Don't do it. It. Don't don't do it. Don't block my no, number. No, don't block your number. Don't block your number. In case we get a call back. Oh my gosh, oh, I'm yeah. so nervous. So the first cursed and scary number is 951-572-2602. And apparently this number is linked to the SCP Foundation. And if you don't know what that is, because I didn't when I was researching this, it's an organization <laughs> founded to secure, contain, and protect strange or paranormal objects, creatures, and people. Oh, cool. So it's a number you call if you see like an alien or if you have paranormal activity to be in your house or if you suspect someone's a vampire anything paranormal you call this number and apparently they come and deal with the problem for you is this like real it's a creepypasta some people say it's real some people say it's just so if somebody actually answers could you tell them that you're worried that your sister's a vampire yeah and they'd be like we'll be right there okay but i don't want a stake in my heart <laughs> yeah oh my gosh imagine if they actually came like prepared 
They probably would like make sure that I am first. Yeah. So I'm not afraid. Do it. So okay. be like, I'm worried that my sister's a vampire. She's really nice though. <laughs> Please stand by while we complete your long distance call. You have reached the SCP Foundation, Southern California, Division 19. Please leave a message including date and time of incident, location of incident, and a description of the incident itself. Thank you. Hi, hello, it's October 1st, 2019, and I'm calling to report that I think my sister is a vampire. She's just been showing a lot of signs, and I cooked her some pasta yesterday with garlic in it, and she like absolutely flew across the room, so I think she might be a vampire. If you can call me back and tell me how we're gonna fix this. She's actually really, really nice, so we don't want to kill her, we just want to take away her vampirism. Thank you, bye. <laughs> okay, so the next haunted number is 408 634 806 and it says there's a lot of rumors about this number but a lot of people think it's a red room number and I can't go into detail about what that is but basically if you know stuff about the deep web a red room number is basically when you call this number they find your location they come and kidnap you take you into a room and torture you in front of people watching on the deep web if you call them yes Okay. We're gonna do this. Well, I don't know if we should do this. I don't think this is gonna be real. How would I- I'll block this number. Oh my gosh. I think these are just like creepypasta numbers that don't actually harm you. You don't- Okay. No. I'll block this number. How about that? <laughs> All's well that ends well. <laughs> No, no. I heard galaxy. I heard all is well that ends well. Creepy. If uh, I disappear, <laughs> it's not an accident. <laughs> okay, the next one is 828-756-0109. It says this number is a true mystery. It's based in North Carolina. It says if you call, you hear ear splitting noises of a man's voice frantically relaying what sounds like a message coded. <laughs> Apparently, if you decode what he's saying, it translates to death. Ew, that was super like alieny. If he's taking all this time to code something that means death, why doesn't he just say death? I don't know, because he could be in a situation. That made me feel really sad. Yeah, like you felt bad for him. Yeah, I really did. It seems like some kind of like Area 51, like. Ew, like that's yeah. where he was. And yeah, because that's what it, it was like. <laughs> That was a good reenactment. Yeah, it was. <laughs> this next one is 407-734-0254. And this one actually really scares me to call because this is a real number for a clown um, that you can call to go to your birthday party. His name is Wrinkles the Clown. He's in, what's FLA? Is that Florida? No. FLA? Isn't Florida spelled FLA? Yeah. <laughs> we don't do geography, apparently. Okay. <laughs> Is Naples in Florida, right? <laughs> Wrinkles the Clown. According to the Washington Post, which is a newspaper, accredited newspaper, it says, he will make an appearance at your party or gathering, he'll prank your friend, or he'll even scare your misbehaving kid what? for the low, low price of a few hundred bucks. He's in his 60s, which would explain the wrinkles. I think it's definitely too old to be clowning around. <laughs> Oh I think it is though, like it's creepy. It says, leave him a message and he'll call you back. Okay, can I leave the message? No, you reach Wrinkles the Clown. I'm not here to take your call. Leave me a message, I'll call you back. <laughs> 
Hi there. Um, I was just calling because I have a child, my child, who is a very, very naughty boy, and I need him to be scared straight by you, and I know that's one of your services. So I would like details, information on how you go about doing that and what the process is there. I would like to know it all. So please call this number back, and I can't wait to hear from you, Wrinkles. Have a good day. Now they have my number. <laughs> that's great. So this next number is 786-519. 3708. Apparently this number is linked to a video game called Hotline Miami 2, which I think I've heard about, never played it. And it's weird because their Twitter account has just been tweeting this number since 2012 without any context. Let's see what it's about. Do you know this game? No. We are 50 together. We march. That was weird. But how would anybody know that's for a game? Unless, like, you know the game. The next one is 858-651-5050. This one is really, really freaking people out because when you call, you'll hear a bunch of random sentences made by these two people. One is a male, one is a female. The sentences don't make any sense. It's like these people are just sitting there saying these poetic sentences that just don't match together at all. And it's the lack of context that makes what you hear so unsettling. <laughs> Fishing in a mountain stream is my idea of a good time. After the dance, they went straight home. The hostess taught the new maid to serve. The show was a flop from the very start. There was water in the cellar after the heavy rain. They're not listed in the new phone book. A large size in stockings is hard to sell. The juice of lemons makes fine punch. Smoke poured out of every crack. Serve the hot rum to the tired heroes. <laughs> Those words were the cue for the actor to leave. The play seems dull and quite stupid. The frosty air passed through the coat. The crooked maze failed to fool the mouse. A saw is a tool used for making boards. Try to have the Mine court is done. <laughs> Apparently it goes on for six minutes. Strong. Six minutes. And it's just gibberish. Like it's just sentences that don't make any sense. Why? I don't know. The next number is 701-347-1936. Apparently if you call this number, it's said to be cursed. And once you listen to the voicemail, it makes you act um, very erratically and changes like your your mind makes you crazy and you will die within 24 hours of calling it. Great. All right. So let's call we'll this. Out. Please state your name after the tone and Google Voice will try to connect you. Sarah. Sarah. Maybe it asked for your name so it can come get you. That like made me feel sick. But I'm not Sarah, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Sarah. That one actually genuinely gave me a bad vibe. Why? It made me feel sick like all of a sudden. I got a headache. <laughs> Yes. My heart just stopped. So this one is 978-435-0163 and apparently this is the most um, cryptic of all of them because everyone's very confused by this number. When you call, you'll hear a man sobbing. It's a loop of a man whimpering and crying. And if you listen, it sounds like he's in a cave or a sewer. Periodically, you'll hear something screech that does not sound human. So last one, guys. Let's see what happens. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Sounds like he's laughing. <laughs> okay, it's it's kind of sad, but also yeah. nobody cries like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyways though, this is the first time all the numbers work. Number is 187777creep. It says if you're in the mood to hear a good old fashioned urban legend, this number can help you out with that. Apparently, if you call this number, you might also hear some spooky music. It basically lets you choose what you want to happen when you make this phone call. I'm a little bit confused, so I'm going to call right now and find out what this all means. The number you have called is not assigned. Please check the number and try to call again. It's the right number. Okay, it's not 
not working for me. I'm so sad. I was kind of excited about this one. All right, let's move on. The next number is 646-868-1844. Apparently the area code for this is based in White Plains, New York, but it doesn't mean very much because apparently it's a VOIP number, meaning the owner could really be based anywhere. The initial message you'll hear upon dialing is weird. It starts with odd bell-like tones, leads into garbled, unintelligible words, and then ends with an answer phone tone. And apparently the weirdest part about all of this is not what happens when you call the number, but what happens after you call this number. Once you hang up, within seconds, you'll receive a text message containing a jumbled mix of words. They're arranged to look like sentences, but they're not actually sentences. They're really just nonsense. Like it says they say things like, surprise steepest recurred landlord, Mr. Wandered amounted of continuing Devonshire, but considered it's rose past oh shoe roof song neat. Doesn't make any sense, it's gibberish. But it texts people stuff like that and people try to decipher it, but really it's just nonsense. And apparently every time you call this number, you'll get a different text in return. And people have no idea why this number exists, so it still is a mystery to this day. So I'm gonna call it. Hopefully this one works. <laughs> We're sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. Is that a part of it? If I get a text, I'm gonna scream. I'm like waiting. So either the number doesn't exist anymore and that was just a normal answering machine or that's a part of the whole creepy thing and then I'll get a text. I'm just waiting. Just waiting. Anytime now. Okay, we're gonna try one more time just in case I put it in wrong. Are these numbers just creepypastas? Because I kind of wanted one to work. Bear with me guys, we're doing this all together. Let's move on to the next one. One is gonna work, I just know it. Next we have 618-625-8313. It says that if you're a Stranger Things fan, you might recognize this number. It's Murray Bowman's phone number. That is, it belongs to the Netflix series Resident Conspiracy Theorist played by Brett Gelman. Apparently calling it presents you with Bowman's answering phone recording, which seems to offer a few hints about what might be in store for us whenever season four finally drops. Apparently it's not like super creepy or anything, but it's kind of a cool Easter egg. So we're going to call because I'm really excited for season four. I don't know about you guys, but if I can get any hints or clues, I'm going to take them. It's ringing. Hi, you have reached the residence of Murray Bauman. Mom, if this is you, please hang up and call me between the hours of 5 and 6 p.m. as previously discussed, okay? If this is Joyce, Joyce, thank you for calling. I've been trying to reach you. I, I have an update. It's about, well, it's, uh, it's probably best if we speak in person. It's not good or bad, but it's something. And if this is anyone but my mother or Joyce, well, <laughs> you, you think you're real clever getting my number, don't you? Here's some breaking news for you. You're not clever. You're not special. You are simply one of the many, many nimwits to call here, and the closest you will ever get to me is this pre-recorded message. So, at the beep, do me a favor. Hang up and never call here again. You are a parasite. <sighs> Thank you and good day. Sorry. This mailbox is full and cannot accept- <laughs> Oh my gosh, wow. He is mean. That was really harsh, thanks a lot. Okay, at least that one worked, but I really want to get a scary one to work, okay? The next number is 508-690-6143. When you call, initially, there's a loud, repetitive honking noise some have likened to a car horn. Others say it's like a buzzing sound before a minute or two of clanging takes the stage. Apparently, it sounds like someone is smacking smashing like a hard object. It sounds like they're hitting it on top of a tabletop or something. And then you'll hear this sudden ear bursting sound of static. And then you'll hear someone say, we're sorry, but the number you have dialed is no longer in service. This message will play as normal, but it's not cleanly or easily. Apparently there's a lot of interference and static. It sounds really unusual. So we're gonna call and see what happens with that. It doesn't sound too scary, but it definitely sounds like really unsettling. You hear that? What the heck? Do 
I don't like this. I don't like this. Wow, it goes on for a while. This is 45 seconds in already. Hello? My dog is freaking out right now. This is almost a minute and a half in. That's insane. stop it because it literally was hurting my poor dog's ears. I'm so sorry, honey. Oh, he's so scared. He was just looking at me like, what the heck is going on? It's all right. It was a scary phone call. I'm so sorry. I won't call it again, I promise. I promise I won't call it again, okay? I love you. The poor guy was looking at me like, Okay, so um, that was definitely a really creepy number. The scariest one yet. Hurt my ears, was confusing. Don't call that one. Okay, we have one more. It is 909-390-0003. Apparently there's a legend surrounding this number. It's called a doppelganger number. A doppelganger number is a phone number which when you dial it, it allows you to converse with your own doppelganger. This is very popular in Japan. And it is said when you call them, it might result in anything from an unsettling experience to a potential death curse. I don't want that, but it'd be kind of cool to talk to my doppelganger, so we're gonna call it right now. Why don't I have Mandy with me? Hello? 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 I'm Jessica, who are you? I'm Jessica, who are you? Are you my doppelganger? Are you my doppelganger? Why are you repeating everything are you I say? Repeating everything I say? I am so scared. I am so scared. Stop! Stop! Stop it! Stop it! I'm hanging up. I'm hanging up. Bye. Bye. What in the heck? Okay, that was really scary, but <laughs> there is an explanation, thank goodness. The number isn't actually cursed, they're just test lines. Phone numbers which allow you to test the audio quality of your phone through something called an echo test. So you aren't speaking with your doppelganger, you're simply hearing your own voice over and over again. So, I don't know. But it does say at the bottom, or are you? It better have been a test line or I'm gonna be freaked out for the rest of my life. <laughs> All right, so let's get into why you should never call your own number. Before we get into that creepy pasta, though, I just want to mention that there was a real scam in 2018. A ton of news stations were covering this all over the world. It was where people were getting these phone calls from their own number very late at night. And what was so creepy is that the screen for the incoming call would say me, and then it would have the person's number underneath. So. Obviously, this was freaking people out because they had no idea why their own number was calling them. And when they would answer the phone, the person on the other end would be like, Your phone has been hacked. Please answer a couple questions so we can confirm your identity. And then they would ask very personal questions like your address, your social insurance number, all kinds of things that phone companies shouldn't be asking people. So it was a scam that a lot of people were falling for because anyone would be curious if their own number was calling them. Like, listen, I never answer unknown calls. Like, if I don't recognize the number, I just let it go right to voicemail. But if I saw that my own number was calling me, I probably would answer it. Comment down below if you would answer the phone if it said me on your caller ID. Not me, like you. You know what I mean? If Jesse B was calling you, would you answer? <laughs> no, but this was a very real scam. And that's why news stations were covering it because they were warning people never to answer your phone if it's your own number calling. So now let's move on to the urban legend, which is definitely a lot more creepy. People say that you should never ever answer your phone if it's your own number calling you because once you do, 
the game begins and you can't get out of it. So basically, if you ignore the call, you're totally fine. But like I said, some people are just too curious and really want to know what's on the other end of the call. Well, if you decide to answer and you say hello, what you'll hear on the other end of the call is your own voice repeating what you say. So for example, if you say, hi, who is this? You'll hear your exact voice say, hi, who is this? And it goes on and on like that no matter what you say into the phone. It's like your own voice is echoing you. But what you don't know is that as long as you stay on the phone, your doppelganger is coming for you. It can track your location as long as you are speaking to it. So there are really creepy stories on the internet about people's doppelgangers actually arriving at their front door or even peering through their bedroom window. And basically your doppelganger wants to take over your life and no one will know you are gone when they replace you because they look exactly like you. They basically are you. It kind of reminds me of the movie Us. The family in the movie meets their doppelganger family who come to attack them to take over their lives. And that movie freaked me out so much, but it really reminds me of this situation. And the urban legend says that even if you hang up the phone on your doppelganger, they'll keep calling you over and over again until they can find you. So basically, don't pick up in the first place and you won't have that problem. And they also say don't call your own number because the same thing will happen. Your doppelganger will pick up the phone. And there are so many stories about this happening to people. So basically they say don't pick up the phone if your own number is calling you and don't call your own number. Now you know me, I love doing stuff like this. <laughs> so I might try to call my own number over on my vlog channel. I will link that down below in the description. Honestly, I'm kind of scared to do it after reading all these stories, but I'm gonna do it. I know I'm gonna do it. All right, so the next creepy thing we're gonna talk about are number neighbors. So if you guys didn't know, basically everybody has a number neighbor. It's basically someone who has the exact same phone number as you, but the very last number is different. It's either gonna be one higher or one lower than your last digit. So for example, if your last number is a three, your number neighbor's gonna have the exact same number, but their last number is gonna be either four or two. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. So we all have number neighbors and there are so many creepypastas going around the internet talking about people that were contacted by their number neighbor and it did not end well. In one story, this person was hanging out in their house and they got a text from their number neighbor that just said, hello. And then they were texting for a little bit. This person was trying to figure out who this stranger was that was texting them. And then the number neighbor said, I'm in your backyard. They broke into the house, the police were called, it was a whole very scary event. So now there's a legend going around saying that if you get contacted by your number neighbor, do not respond. And this really creeped me out because I remember back in 2012, I believe, I got a text from my number neighbor that just said, hey number neighbor. I mean, it sounded very friendly, but I had no idea what a number neighbor was at that time. So I just totally ignored that text message. But I believe in 2019, texting your number neighbor became like a challenge around the internet. So people would like text their number neighbor and then post the conversation screenshot on the internet. A lot of the times the interactions are very funny to read. I mean, I wouldn't encourage you guys to do this because obviously you're still talking to a stranger, right? And even though there are some funny conversations that come out of it, there is the total opposite side where the number neighbor comes to find you. And lastly, we're gonna talk about a story called The Unknown Poem. There was this girl who lost her phone while she was at a concert one night. It was gone for a week, which is a pretty long time to lose your phone. And every time she called this concert venue to see if it was brought to the lost and found, they would say it has not been dropped off. But on the seventh day it was missing, the venue ended up calling her to say that a person dropped off her phone. And the person who dropped it off ran in so fast that they barely saw his face. They say his hood was up over his head. So the girl went to pick up her phone, she looked through it and everything looked totally normal. All her apps were still there, her passwords hadn't been changed, nothing had been hacked, her photos were still there. It was as if no one had ever taken it. Then months later when she was looking through the notes section on her phone, she noticed one that was written the week her phone was missing. So it had the date and time and it was like three days after the concert she went to. And obviously she did not have 
have her phone with her at that time. It seemed to be this bizarre poem that literally made no sense when she read it. And this is what the poem said. A dark night, three seats behind you. Zero, one, too loud, three. Swirling clouds above your head, can't see you. Four, five, six, seven, I'm here, reaching out, your soft hair. It has been for years. Remember? Eight, nine, tenth time trying. Too late, too late, I have you. Imagine finding that on your phone after it had been stolen or lost. That would be terrifying. And like, this girl has no idea what this poem means. So if you guys could like decipher it, please let me know. To me, it just seems like this creepy stalker who's probably been watching her for years and years. That's what I get out of it. But this girl was so freaked out she brought it to the police and they couldn't do anything about it because they had no idea who took it and who wrote it. So let me know what you think of this poem down below and if you ever lose your phone definitely look through your notes because you never know what might be there. <laughs> So payphones were really popular quite some time ago, so I'm gonna do a brief history for those of you who may not be too familiar. A payphone is a telephone that lets the public make phone calls if they pay for them first. Many payphones accept coins, but some can accept credit cards, debit cards, and phone cards as well. In the 20th century, they were very often used, especially in cities. But then when people started using mobile phones, payphones quickly became rarer in small towns and later also in cities. When the telephone was invented, in 1876, it was at first a service available only to the relatively wealthy. These rich families would pay a large monthly subscription to have a telephone in their house. So after some time, they thought it would be necessary to create an easier way for the general public to access the phone without having to pay a subscription and it's more of like a one-time use thing. So in the early 1900s, they created telephone booths, but they were made out of wood and operated with an honor system. You basically made the call and when you were done, since back then all telephones required operators, the operators told you how many coins to deposit. Within a year or two of their introduction, 25,000 of them could be found in New York City alone, and they were usually found in subway stations, in banks, in hotels, and in 1999 there were approximately 2 million phone booths in the United States, but only 5% of those are left today, and about a fifth of those are in New York City alone. So I guess they're not as rare in New York City, but they're rare everywhere else. If you see one, that's a rare moment. Okay, let's get into our very first creepy story. This one is called The Campground Night Shift. This story is about a guy named Daniel that worked the night shift at a campground, and he was there from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. every single night, or I guess technically every single morning. And he actually didn't really mind it. He would bring along his PS2 and would game for most of the night, and he found he only really had to deal with about one to two people each night shift, so it's a pretty easy job. It was just him in a really tiny shack in the forest with nothing around him but darkness all night. And the very first week he was there, he spoke to another worker who had just recently quit, who told him about this strange payphone a few feet away from the shack where he worked. He said it rang every single night at 4.17 a.m. exactly. And the weird thing was it would only ring once. He said it was probably just like an automated test call, but he never answered it himself. Well, the first few months that Daniel worked there, it was in the middle of a really hot summer. So most nights he kept the windows closed in the shack to not let any really hot air in. So he was never able to hear the payphone going off. But when September hit and it got cooler out, he started leaving the windows open. And sure enough, at 4.17 exactly in the morning, the phone would ring only once. And he said the ring itself actually sounded super creepy. It almost sounded like the payphone was underwater or something. And one night he actually worked up the nerve to go and answer it. So he said, an alarm on his phone for 4.15 and went to wait by the phone until it rang. And when he did, he answered it, but there was no sound. There was just this dead air, like there was someone on the other end, but they weren't talking. So he said hello a few more times and then hung up. He did this every single night for a week with no results. He didn't think really anything of it and then just left it alone for the next month. Well, the first week of October, he decided to go and answer the phone one more time. So he set his alarm and at 417, he picked it up. This time he heard something. It sounded like someone was inhaling through clenched teeth and the voice sounded really, really rough. He said it was almost like the voice had gargled gravel. And then a voice said his name, his first name, his middle name, 
and his last name. And it was a voice he had never heard before and it terrified him so much that he hung up the phone right away and quit his job so he would never have to be near this payphone ever again. And that's how that one ended. I don't know if this one's a true story because this sounds really creepy. Imagine picking up a ringing payphone and it knows your first name, middle name, and last name. No, thank you. And then I have another story called the broken payphone. This is about a guy who worked at a cell phone store inside of this really large shopping complex. And every day at 11.30, he goes out to eat lunch at a local sandwich shop. And right outside this sandwich shop, there is this line of completely broken payphones. They don't work anymore, they're abandoned, they're all rusty, no one goes to them. But he did notice that every single day at 11.30 while he was eating his sandwiches, this old woman would walk up to one, pick it up, and would just start talking. She always looked like she was crying and frustrated and throwing her hands up in the air. It was like she was arguing with whoever this person was on the other end, although the phone wasn't actually working. So he wondered if she was crazy, but he always felt this curiosity to eavesdrop. The first day he was eavesdropping, he got a few sentences from her. She was saying things like, why do you think you can leave me so easily? You promised to stay by my side forever. And every word that she spoke always sent this chill down this guy's spine. The third day of eavesdropping, she would say things like, you were so young, I miss you. Why don't you ever say anything anymore? Why don't you just come back to me? After she said things like this, she would slam the phone back down. She would walk off angrily. It was almost like she was having a fight with a former lover or husband or something. On the fourth day he was eavesdropping, she was saying, please, please just talk to me. He decided to stop eavesdropping after that. It just seemed really wrong and she seemed to be in a really bad place mentally. But the next morning when he came into work, he saw her lifeless body at the bottom of the escalator and taped to her chest was a piece of paper and the piece of paper said, I can finally be with you now. Well, that day he still went back to his favorite sandwich shop and as he was sitting there, he heard the payphone start ringing. So he stood up and out of curiosity, he went over and picked up the phone. When he answered it, he almost dropped it immediately when he heard the voice on the other end. It was his mother who had passed away two years ago and she was saying, I miss you and I wish I could see you. I can't talk for long, but I just wanted to make sure that you were okay. He hung up the phone and walked away right after that and he knew right away what that payphone had been used for. It was some connection to the other side and it wasn't a good thing. So there was a very creepy rumor that was spreading around the internet in Indonesia back in 2020 and it had to do with Facebook and WhatsApp. And what's interesting is that the news of this very scary legend never left Indonesia. So that might be why you've never heard of it before. Unless you are one of my subscribers from Indonesia, which is really cool. Technology based urban legends have always creeped me out. I've done so many videos on movies and game glitches and haunted phone numbers. It's just so creepy because you can't really escape technology. It's always around us 24 seven. And especially when it has to do with our phone because we're never away from our phone. Let's be real. And before I get into this legend, I just wanna preface this by saying that the only sources discussing this legend are in Indonesian, which is a language that I don't speak. So I did have to translate some of it. I did find very few sites talking about this in English and the ones that I did were helpful to me, but there's not a lot out there in English. So if you're watching and you know this legend well and I say anything wrong or I missed something, please comment down below and let me know. Okay, so this legend is called Yoteno Wants to Call You. In May of 2020, rumors began circulating Facebook's Indonesian users concerning a mysterious profile belonging to someone or something calling themselves Yoteno. So people would just be scrolling along on Facebook and you know how every so often suggested friends pops up? Well, people were seeing this weird profile pop up in their suggested friends and Yoteno's profile picture was very unusual. It looked like a digital drawing depicting a white-faced young person with long red hair along with black holes for eyes and something black oozing from the character's mouth. There was just something so off about this Facebook profile. And if you were to send a message to this bizarre profile, rumors stated that you would have an equally bizarre conversation with its owner. They apparently send you this code that they want you to crack. And if you fail to solve this code, they will then send you a string of ones and 
and zeros. And people say it looks like it could be a message written in binary code, but it could also just be complete nonsense. And after these ones and zeros are sent, it starts sending you phrases like, I see you, I wanna call you, you died today. And what's interesting is that these phrases are written in English, although the spelling and grammar were sometimes incorrect. And after you get these creepy messages, you'll supposedly receive a video call on WhatsApp by a mysterious number, and the most common number that people say belongs to Yoteno is 669-444-1925. And the WhatsApp profile matches the one on Facebook, so it's the same creepy person. So now you're faced with a decision. Do you answer the phone call or not? And you can choose not to, which would be a wise decision, but if you do pick up, you'll supposedly see a real life monstrous version of the Yoteno illustration. It looks like a creature sitting in the dark with long red hair and glowing yellow eyes. So yes, this was really freaking people out. And after this whole phenomenon went viral, people started saying that this phenomenon wasn't actually a ghost, but it was instead a hacker. Apparently when you engage with the Uteno Facebook profile and WhatsApp number, you were opening yourself up to having your banking information and potentially your entire identity stolen. Some say they will also be able to hack into your cell phone camera to always watch you. Now this warning was all over news stations in Indonesia, and now people have made hundreds of copycat accounts of this Yoteno profile. So you actually don't know which one is the original, which is kind of freaky. There's just so many people copying this. And in the end, it does make the most sense that this was probably just a manufactured story. Like there's no Yoteno ghost and there's also no hacker. It's just like an urban legend to scare people, but definitely tell me what you guys think. What's strange is that the number in this urban legend is actually not an Indonesian number, but it says it actually is a US number and it comes from California servicing the San Jose area. And it's not a landline and it's not a mobile phone. It's actually what's called a VOIP number, which is a voice over internet protocol number, which means that whoever is behind it doesn't have to be in the United States to use it, so they could be anywhere in the world. And people have tried calling this number even recently and no one ever picks up or it just goes to like that busy signal. But what's creepy is that there still is a warning out there that says Yoteno still might see you and Yoteno still might want to call you, so consider yourselves warned. So yeah, this legend is still really creepy. I am tempted to try calling this number on the vlog channel because I am crazy. So we might do that. So just be warned for that. I would not suggest you calling it though. That's probably not a good idea. Especially if it's not an urban legend. We don't want to be like bothering someone's phone, right? And